To get started, Apple has just announced their new update for the iPad OS 16, which is very similar to iOS 16. If you've updated your iPhone to that, this allows you to change your wallpaper right through the lock screen. You can unsend edit text message and so much more. And you want to make sure that this is updated on your new iPad. So all we have to do is just go to settings right here, then go down to general, and then you're going to see iPad OS 16.1. You want to click download and install. Then after that, it's going to take a few moments. Just put in your password and install this new update. So without further ado, Let's dive into today's video, your 2022 complete beginner's guide on your iPad and how to use it. You can actually use your fingerprint on the power button to get into your iPad, opposed to having to type in your password. This makes it much more convenient, easy to get into your iPad. So let me show you guys how this works. All I have to do is just shut off my iPad. Then if I put my finger right here, you're gonna see that I automatically get entered into the iPad, making it so much easier than having to type in that password and go through it that way. The new iPad Air is lighter and faster than ever. And as you can see, it's got an incredible display. This display is a 10.9 inch liquid retina display allowing you to see very clearly well using your iPad Air. And on top of this, it also has an anti-reflective coating. So what this means is you're not going to have to deal with any reflections from any light while using the iPad, allowing your experience to be so much better while using this brand new Apple product. Also, this iPad is compatible with the Apple Pencil, so if you have that, I definitely recommend using it. It allows for great note-taking, and you can access any information or apps while using the Apple Pencil. So definitely use that if you have the Apple Pencil. Like all Apple products, it's got an incredibly aesthetic and sleek design. As you can see, it's also super light. It honestly feels like you're carrying nothing around with you to take the load off, and you guys can bring it anywhere without even noticing it or feeling that weight of an iPad. And I definitely recommend getting a case for this because you don't want to damage it, but Overall, it is super light and super easy to use. We got an incredible camera right here. I'm gonna dive into some incredible features you can use with that camera to get the best out of it with the iPad Air. But overall, let's dive into the complete setup process for this iPad, and I'm gonna show you guys how to use it like an absolute pro. So now we just turned on our iPad, and you're gonna see it's gonna take us to the screen to get started. It's gonna show us all the different languages you can use to set up. So now we're gonna just scroll up like this, and then we're gonna be able to get started. So we're gonna to wanna to click English, since that's the language, I'm going to choose United States. And then it's going to ask you to do a quick start. So basically this will happen is you're going to be able to bring your iPhone or iPad near this iPad to sign in and set up. So it's a super easy process. It allows you to get the iPad set up much faster than just setting it up manually. So if you have another iPhone or another iPad, all you have to do is just bring it to the iPad right here and we'll be able to download or transfer that data from that previous phone or iPad to the brand new iPad Air and we're going to get started on that right now. So the next page is going to ask to choose a Wi-Fi network. So you're going to have to connect to Wi-Fi before getting all this information started because you're going to need that to transfer all your data. After you put in your Wi-Fi password information, it's going to say it's going to take a few minutes to load and then it's going to take us to this data and privacy section. So this icon appears when an Apple feature asks you to use your personal information. So we're going to click continue for now so we can move on to the next step and now it's going to walk us through some features. So for example, we have a touch ID at the top of the power of the iPad where the power button is and it's going to allow you to access or turn on or get into your iPad just using your fingerprint opposed to clicking or entering a password. So we're going to set that up right now. All we have to do is just click continue and then we have to place our fingers on the top button right here and then we're going to have to continue to do that until it's fully set up. So this might take some time, but you guys I'm sure have done this before. So we're gonna continue to do this until it is fully set up. So now our fingerprint is added. I only use my left hand, but depending on what you like to use for your hands, it's up to you. I just use my left hand for the sake of the video, but you can also add fingerprints later on for any of your fingers or any person to get into your iPad, but you can set that up later. But for now, I just use my one finger on my left hand. But like I said, you can go back to that later. We're gonna press continue now. And then you can add another fingerprint if you want, but all you have to do is just rotate and roll an additional fingerprint to easily unlock your iPad with either hand. So if we wanna set that up, it's gonna be on the side of the iPad right here. So we're gonna set that up with my right hand now, and let's click continue. It's gonna ask you to create a passcode in case you don't have access to using your fingertips or if you wanna put in your password manually. So just put in any password where you think is going to keep your iPad safe and secure, preferably a number or a password that you only know or any of your close friends or family know. So once you do that, just come back to this video, but just make sure to create a password in case you're not using Touch ID on your iPad Air. So if you have an iPad that you previously had before the iPad Air, you can all you have to do is just bring that iPad over next to this iPad Air, and it's going to transfer all the data wicked easily from that iPad to the not new iPad. I unfortunately do not have an iPad. All I have is an iPhone, and it does not work to transfer an iPhone data to the iPad. 
had. So for the sake of this video, we're gonna do setup manually, which is completely fine. It doesn't take as it doesn't take as quickly, but we're gonna get started on that. But if you do have an iPad previous to the iPad Air, you can just transfer your data from simply bringing your iPad to your new iPad Air. But like I said, we're gonna set up manually for the sake of this video. I wanna take a moment of your time to introduce the Penable Stylus for the iPad, which lets you easily write and draw on your device. The Penable Stylus offers the same quality as the Apple Pencil at a third of the price, giving the same great features for less of a price. When you unbox your stylus, your product will come in a sleek and stylish exterior of either black or white, along with a convenient USB-C charging cable. With an incredibly strong battery, the stylus will last for two hours with just five minutes of charging and 10 hours when fully charged, giving you uninterrupted writing time at all times. The tip of the stylus also easily screws off, so you can switch it out with a new one as needed. And another convenient feature of the stylus is that it does not require Bluetooth. Simply tap it on your iPad screen to sync and start using it right away. And with pixel level precision, you'll get no offsetting between the pencil's location and its marks, allowing you to write and sketch with incredible accuracy. Once you're done using it, the stylus will even magnetically snap onto the side of your iPad, allowing you to easily carry it with you so you'll never have to worry about losing it. With a slim, portable design and incredible functionality at a great price, the Penable iPad Stylus is the perfect accessory to enhance your device, and you can order it today using the link on the screen or in the description. Enjoy writing and drawing with your Penable Stylus. So now it's going to take us to this page where it says Choose Backup, and then it's going to show the options you have. So as you can see, we have Andy's iPhone from yesterday at 8.39 p.m., the iPhone 12, so we're going to click Yes right here and choose that. So we're stirred from iPhone Backup. We're going to click OK. And now it's going to take a second to load, but you can choose what you want for that. And then it's going to say, make this your new iPad. So here's everything you set up as you had it on your phone. So I agree with that. I'm going to click continue. This is what I want. And now this is my new iPad and it's going to take all my previous information that you can use from your phone and transfer it to this. So I'm going to click, click yes and click continue for that. And then it's asked to add a card. I'm not going to do this right now, but you can just click add this card to wallet later. So we can skip that step for now. And then you can also set up Apple Cash by setting it up easily on your iPad Air. It's taking a minute to load. I'm probably not going to set this up because you can set up later and it just delays the setup process. But like I said, it's completely up to you whether you want to set it up now or not. But after you guys got that done, just come back to this part of the video. So now it takes us to this page where it says restore from iCloud and it's going to give you the time remaining and estimation of that time. So this takes a little bit because it's going to transfer all of that iCloud data that you've had on your previous Apple devices, such as your iPhone or other iPad. And it's going to take all that data and transfer it from your iCloud to this iPad. So it does take a little bit. Just make sure to come back to this video after this part is done and we can move on to the next steps. But like I said, tons of different ways you can transfer the data. I chose iCloud backup. But then again, if you had a previous iPad, you can just transfer the data directly or choose one of the following options. On the lock screen, all you have to do is just double tap or tap your iPad Air's screen. It's gonna take us to the home page with the time and the date. And then that's basically, that's all on the lock screen. But I'm gonna show you guys how to get into your iPad Air. There's two ways, like we discussed earlier. You can use your fingerprint or you can use your passcode. So if you wanna use your passcode, all you have to do is just swipe up like this. It's gonna ask for touch ID or enter your passcode and you can enter your passcode manually, whatever you set up. But if you wanna get in easier without having to type in all those numbers, you can just use the touch ID and all you have to do is just click right here and then you're gonna be into your iPad and it's gonna look like this. As you can see, the screen is super high quality, really good display. And as you can see, if we scroll around, there's gonna see that a lot of these apps haven't loaded yet. But that's no big deal, it just takes a little bit of time since you just transferred all of that data over. But as you can see, the iPad has an incredibly large screen, super aesthetic and nice display. And we're gonna dive into all these features of how to use your iPad Air like in a complete expert. As you can see, now we're on the home screen of our iPad Air and basically on this home page right here, you're gonna see all of these widgets that actually transferred from my iCloud over to here and you can change these widgets or add new ones depending on what you want shown but as you can see for a quick overview we have my weather we have a clock app we have notes we have the date and then we have the top stories in the news so I'm going to show you guys how to add new widgets but those are the ones that appeared right when I turned on and set up this new iPad but if you want to add a new widget, it's super easy to do. All you have to do is just hold down the screen like this, and then it's going to start to shake. All the apps are going to start to shake and move. Then you're going to see this plus button right here, and that's where you're going to add a new widget. But before that, you see all these minus buttons right here. These are where you can delete or remove apps from the home screen. I'm going to show you guys how to do that later. But to add a new widget, all you have to do is just click plus right here. 
And then now we have the option to search widgets depending on what we want from all these options. We have suggestions, we have our music, we have the stocks, we have reminders. So whatever you want, for example, say we wanted to add um, this right here, this podcast. If you listen to podcasts a lot, we can just click add widget right here. Super easy to do. And now that widget is going to appear on my home screen. And basically, you can use it or add widgets depending on what you want anywhere on the screen. But just a few things about the iPad Air. You can actually use the Apple Pen on the iPad Air to take notes or click on any of apps or use anything you want with the Apple Pen on the iPad Air. I don't have an Apple Pen with me, but it really works well with the iPad Air. And I definitely recommend getting one if you do use an iPad a lot. I think I'm gonna get one myself because I like taking notes on a screen like the iPad, especially in this note section right here. So if you have an Apple Pen or you wanna get one, I definitely recommend doing that because it works really well and it's super compatible and easy to use with the iPad Air. And that's just one of the cool features for the iPad Air that doesn't come with it when you get it but you guys should definitely check out or look in look into investing for one when you get this ipad because the apple pen is a great product from apple and it works super well with this ipad air the ipad screen is so big it's much bigger than an iphone there's actually a lot of ways you can use the screen so i know a lot of people who use ipads prefer turning their ipad this way and holding it kind of like a video game so for example if you want to do that you just turn your ipad this way and it's gonna be able to move and use your iPad in this fashion. But like I said, there's ways to change that and there's ways to use it depending on what you like. I know a lot of people like my dad like to use their iPad this way, but it's your call and all you have to do is just twist the iPad sideways. And if you wanna bring it back this way, you can do that as well. Like I said, it's completely up to you depending on what orientation you want. But whatever you prefer, you can either turn your iPad or orient it sideways or keep it up vertical like this. The newer iPhones and the newer iPads or any of the Apple products, there's no home button. So there's a different way to operate or clear or move things on your iPhones or iPad screen compared to when it did have the home button. And I just want to show you guys how to use that. An important idea to keep in note is to get all of your apps to see which ones are open. All you have to do is just swipe up on your iPad like that. And these are going to show you all the apps that you have previously opened or used. And these are continuously running. So if you want to clear these to save storage or save battery, all you have to do is just swipe up like I just showed you guys. And it's going to take you to all the apps that are currently open on your iPad Air. And to get rid of them or close them so you're not draining battery, all you have to do is just swipe up like this. And these are going to get rid of all of the apps that are open. And I definitely recommend doing this. I'm really good at doing this. I always remember to because because you don't want your iPads or any of your Apple products batteries to drain by just keeping those open even if you're not using them. It's not worth it. So just make sure to clear those apps. Like I said, all you have to do is just swipe up like this. Obviously, I just cleared all my apps, but if I didn't, if I swiped up and show all those apps that were just open, and that's how you clear them, I definitely recommend doing that. If you do open a lot of apps and forget to clear them, you should definitely start doing that so it doesn't drain your battery. Another important feature for the iPad Air and like all other Apple tech, I wanna show you guys where the control center is because depending on what feature or what type of phone you have or what um, generation phone you have for the Apple products or iPads, there's different ways to access the control center. For this iPad Air's case, you access the control center by simply just swiping down right in this right corner right here. And it's gonna take you to this control center where it's gonna show all the essential features that you need or show when using your iPad Air. And I'm gonna walk you guys through all of these briefly. So as you can see, we have our airplane mode right here. We don't need to turn that on unless we're in an airplane. We have our Wi-Fi, which we connected to previously. We have our Bluetooth. You want that on in case you want to connect to your AirPods or any of your Bluetooth devices. And then we have this button right here, which is essentially your AirDrop. And this allows you to AirDrop or send photos, files to any of your peers or colleagues just by clicking on it on that photo. And it'll automatically appear on your colleague's Apple device. I don't have a colleague with me right now, but if I did and I wanted to share a product, I could have AirDrop turned on and that file would be sent to them without having to send it manually through a text message or an email. So that's one feature you guys definitely wanna check out when using your iPad Air if you wanna send photos or files to any of your friends. But if we go back, you see we have this iPad orientation lock turned right here. And basically what this does, by clicking that, it's gonna allow your iPad to stay in one orientation regardless of how you turn your iPad, whether it's horizontal or vertical. So right now I have that off, so when I turn my iPad sideways, all the apps and the screen will turn sideways as well. But say I turn this on right here, this means it's not gonna flip when I rotate the iPad like this. As you can see, it doesn't rotate. And that's because I turned on this orientation lock. But if we go back and then go back to the control center 
and I turn this off again, you're gonna see if I twist the iPad now, I wanna see that it's going to turn like it should because we have that orientation lock turned off and you this will allow you to use your iPad in any direction or orientation you want. But like I said, it is completely up to your call. Right now for the sake of the video, I'm gonna keep this orientation lock turned off, but if you don't want it to flip when you turn it around or turn the orientation of the iPad, just turn that lock on and it'll stay in that orientation that you want. Next, in the control center, we have our music right here, which is this tab. If I was playing any sort of audio, either it's a music or podcast through Apple Music or whatever platform I use to listen to that stuff, You'd see it'd be playing right here. Obviously, I don't have that open right now, or I don't have anything playing, so it's paused and not showing anything. But it'd be an easy access to go right there. Instead of having to go into the music app and change songs, you can do it right in this control center right here. Super easy to do. And then now we have our brightness right here. If you hold this down, you're gonna have your brightness. Obviously, we have dark mode, which will essentially turn the screen to a dark background opposed to a light background. We have our night shift on, off, and then we have our true tone on. So true tone just gives a more vibrant display of the iPad, and that's how it came when I opened and turned on this iPad. It was already on. So like I said, it's your call. If you want that off, it doesn't really matter. There's no big difference in battery drainage with that on or off. And then also I want to talk about night shift because it is important. When you go on your phone or any screen at night, you can actually damage your eyes by staring at the bright lights or the LED lights for too long. So to reduce the strain on your eyes and help you get better night sleeps, I recommend turning night shift on before you go to bed if you want to go on your iPad or your iPhone. This way you'll be able to have less strain on your eyes before going to bed and you won't have that headache and you'll be able to fall asleep easier. By turning night shift on, this will allow you to have a dimmer more like yellowish orange screen which is less strain on your eyes so before you go to bed or it's night or whenever you're in the dark I definitely recommend turning that on so you reduce the strain and you can get a better night's sleep without damaging your eyes and I definitely recommend turning that on but for now since I'm not going to bed nor I'm in the dark I'm going to keep that off and like I said dark mode that's just going to turn the screen black like that as you can see I preferred having a light screen on so I'm going to shut that off but like I said these are all up to your preferences of what you want on and what you don't want on for brightness so I'm going to shut that off and then lastly, we have the brightness obviously right here. So you can adjust that however you want. I like where it's at right now, but say it's too bright, you can just turn that down super easily. Then lastly, we have the volume right here, super easy, not much to say about that. We have the volume, you can change that however you want it. And then we have these four right here. So we have the camera. This takes you directly to the camera if you don't want to go to there manually. But I'm going to show you guys and walk you guys through a little bit about the camera in a little bit because it's incredible on the iPad Air. We have our ringer. We have our stopwatch. And then we have this right here which is basically our notes, because the iPad's great for taking notes. Like I said, it created a whole different section on the control center for that. So I definitely recommend taking iPad notes on your iPad if you want. And I'm gonna walk you guys through some notes features in a little bit on the iPad. Like I said, it's even better with the Apple Pen. But like I said, if you don't have that, you can just use your finger. But I do recommend getting the Apple Pen if you get the chance with this new iPad Air because it does complement it well. I also wanted to mention another feature for you guys to get started with your iPad Air. So as you can see, we have our home screen. And like I said, to get to the control center, you swipe down right here. It's going to take you to it. But if you just swipe down like right here, for example, the Siri suggestions and search bar is going to come up where you can search whatever you want, whatever apps you want to look up, whatever information or data you need. It's easy and accessible by just pulling down right there and clicking search. And then Siri suggestions is going to show up. And these are going to be all the suggestions that Siri recommends based on apps and data you use when getting your new iPad or the data that carried over from your previous Apple device. So it's pretty intuitive, but if you want to search something without having to manually look for it on the iPad, I definitely recommend doing that. That's one feature about the home screen in case you didn't know. And then we also have this audio right here. So instead of typing it in, if you want to just click that microphone right here and just speak into the Siri suggestions to find what you want to look up or what you want to search for, it'll pick that up. It's very intuitive and you'll be able to find your apps or data by just speaking into it rather than typing. But like I said, it's up to you. I prefer typing, but then again, everyone's different. But that's one way you can access different apps or information on your iPad Air. Whether you're using an iPhone, an iPad, or any Apple device, Siri is a staple in all the Apple products and allows you to access information without having to type it in. You can just speak to her, she's very intuitive. And you definitely wanna set that up on whatever device you have, especially the iPad Air, because it's very helpful. I always use Siri, and I'm sure most of you do too. But when you get the iPad Air, you have to set it up manually. And I just wanna show you guys how to do that quickly. All you have to do is just go to settings right here. And then we're gonna go down to Siri and search. And we're gonna have listen for Hey Siri turned on, but 
I want to turn it off just to show you guys how this works. So basically, we're going to click listen for Hey Siri. And now we're going to set up Hey Siri to help Siri recognize your voice when you say her name. So we're going to click continue right here. Hey Siri. Hey Siri, send a message. Hey Siri, how's the weather today? Hey Siri, set a timer for three minutes. And finally, hey Siri, play some music. So now, hey Siri is ready. And so whenever you wanna say hey Siri, you don't have to tap anything. If you just say her name with that hey involved, she's gonna come up and you're gonna be able to ask her anything or get any information or allow her to do anything you need from her. So I definitely recommend setting it up regardless if it's the iPad or not. You always want Hey Siri on. Siri is a great feature for the iPad and all Apple products. I also know there's a lot to dive into on the settings and there's a lot of information to learn for your iPad Air, but I definitely recommend going to the settings app when you get the chance because there's going to be tons of features and information you can learn about your iPad Air simply by just going and scrolling through these different settings options. I'm going to dive into some in a little bit, but overall when you get the chance, go to settings for your iPad Air and check out all the options you can control and use when you using this iPad. A lot of options and information is given on the settings tab, so I definitely recommend checking it out when you get the chance. I also never mentioned when you're on the homepage of your iPad Air, I already showed you guys if you scroll down like this, you can search any apps or information you want. If you do this right here, you can get to the control center. But if you just swipe from the very top of the screen like this, it's going to take you to the notification center. It's going to look like the home or the lock page, except it's going to give all the no notifications that you receive on your iPad Air when you get those notifications. So if you want to access your notifications that way, they're going to be on this notification section. But like I said, just to get to that page, you just swipe down like this. and It's going to appear right there. Super easy to do, but I just wanted to run that by you guys in case you've never used an iPad before. Since the iPad is relatively large, it's definitely worth using the cameras so you can get a better view of what you're looking for. And like I said, for the iPad Air, the camera's actually incredible. So I'm going to go to the camera app right here. I'm just going to show you guys exactly how the camera kind of looks. So basically, if I pick it up, the camera's really incredible. I don't know if this gives you guys the best idea of how it looks, but from my view, it's very incredible. It gets all the details. And like I said, with any iPhone or Apple product, there's tons of different features you can use when you using your camera. So definitely check those out when you get the chance. If you want to take a video, photo, different types of photos like panoramic, square, portrait, all these options you can do. So as you can see, we're on the home screen. We have all of our widgets and apps throughout here. But as you can see, we have the staple apps that are below right here, like your messages, Safari, music. These are all the apps that come with the iPhone and are used a lot that come with the iPad as well. And these are all the staple apps that they put down here. But if you notice the app farthest to the right, there's going to be multiple ones in this section. If we click on that, it's going to take us to this app library. So if you don't want to search for your, all of your apps by just looking through your home screen, if you click on that button right there, it's going to take you to your app library and it's going to show you all your apps. So we, as you can see, we have suggestions, recently added, social, productivity, and finance, all these options to choose from. And you can also access this app library by just scrolling all the way to the back of, or the last page of your iPad. So whatever way you find it's easier to access it, I definitely would assume this way is the best way to get there. It takes you to your app library and you can see all the apps that you have. But also say you're too distracted and you're using one app a lot and it's honestly affecting your productivity and you're spending too much time on it. You can actually hide that app from the home screen so it only goes to your app library or you can only see in your app library so you're not inclined to go on it all the time because it won't be on your home screen. So for example, say we spend too much time on Venmo. Bad example, but if you hold down Venmo like this, you can have the option to remove this app and now you're gonna have two options, either delete the app or remove the home screen. So if you don't wanna delete the app but you wanna use it less, all you have to do is just click remove from home screen and now it's not gonna be on your home screen anymore. So if you're spending too much time on it, you won't be inclined to use it when you see it. Instead, it's gonna be only in your app library. So you'll see it in your app library and if you don't see, you can just type it in, but it's gonna be there instead to have access to it. But like I said, I recommend using that or deleting apps from your homepage and removing them to your app library just if you're using it too much and if you wanna increase your productivity and spend less time on a certain app, I definitely recommend checking that out. But these are some features about the home screen and the app library that I think you guys should know when using your iPad Air. I've already showed you guys a lot about the home screen. I've showed you all the apps and different features you can use when using the home screen. But I also wanna show you guys what happens when you swipe to the other side or the other end of the homepage. So as you can see, we have all our apps this way, but if you swipe 
all the way this way, it's actually going to show you this top stories and all this other information about your iPad to the left. So for example, we have our top stories, we have our calendar, we have our weather, we have our location, our data usage or what percentage of apps we're using the most on our iPad. We have our battery percentage. We have our tip section, stocks, all these different information. And you can edit this depending on what you want. So if you click edit, you can choose what you want in this section or delete what you want. And when you click plus right here, you have all the options to choose from different features or suggestions on your Apple iPad. But like I said, I like these options. But if you want to add anything on this left hand tab for your iPad Air, you can do that. It's a similar option to the widgets like I showed you guys earlier. But like I said, you have all these options if you swipe to the left if you want to get some information or learn something about your iPad or see how much data you're using. Whatever it may be, you have this option I don't want you guys to forget about on the iPad Air. I'm going to click done and then just out of that we just swipe to the left and now we are back on the home screen again but that's one other feature about the home page on the ipad air the ipad air any ipad in general is great for taking notes iphone screens can be too small to take notes on if you don't prefer writing with a pen and paper or typing using a keyboard and you prefer the screen of an ipad to take notes on you can gladly do that with the ipad air it's a great place to take notes on but there's multiple ways to access. Obviously, we have my notes tab right here where you can click on that. will take me directly to my notes. If you search in notes on this search power bar, it'll also take you there. And then like I previously showed you guys in the control center right here, we have this notes tab right there. And basically, that'll take us to the notes page. But I want to hold you this down because it's going to also show you guys some additional options on top of just taking you directly to the notes page. So if we hold that down right here, it's going to, the notes tab is going to pop up. And we have these four options. So we have new note by clicking that it's going to take us directly to the notes page and we're going to, be able to add a new note if you want to write down or jot something down quickly to keep it in your memory or rem remember it for later that's one option we have a new checklist so this is going to take you to a checklist you can create on your note section so for me, I usually use the note section to take groceries or put down my grocery list. And then I'll make that into a checklist where I can add or check off the groceries I've already bought or what I need. So for example, if we do a new checklist right here, it's gonna take us and it's gonna create a tab right here or dots to follow what you wanna put in. So if you wanna put in groceries or whatever type of checklist you wanna put down, if you want to stay productive or whatever it may be, just put those in and then it'll continue to add dots to put in new new checks. And then once you've completed those checks, all you have to do is just click a button. So for example, if I say toothbrush right here, and then if I remember to brush my teeth, I just click check right there. And now that is going to be checked off and I can feel a little bit better about myself. But like I said, that's one option you have on the quick notes section. If we go back and hold down notes again, we have a new photo. So you can actually take a photo through this notes tab right here. And we also can scan documents, which is super cool. So if you use your camera and put a document or anything that needs to be scanned under your iPad's camera, it's going to scan that. So I don't have anything to scan right here, but I just want to show you guys how that would look. So say we have a thing to scan right here. I would just place it under my camera and it'd be right here. And we'd be able to scan that. And then it'd be able to pick it up and save it in my notes section, which I think is super cool. And one of the cool features about the iPad Air. I already showed you guys how to turn on Hey Siri in your settings, but there's multiple ways to contact her and I want to show you guys some of those options. So for example, one of the key options to use when contacting Siri is all you have to do is just hold down the power button and you're going to see Siri is going to pop up right down here instead of saying, I'm hey, not sure I understand. Oops. Yeah. As you can see, she will come up right there by just holding down that power button. And that's one way to access her. Like I said, you can also access her by typing in or saying, hey, Siri into your iPad and she'll automatically pick that up. Tons of options to choose from, but that's one way to access Siri. Like I said, all you have to do is just hold down the power button right there and then you will be good to go when accessing her. So a few more features about the iPad Air before we end this video. I want to show you guys how to take a screenshot because it's obviously different on the iPhone compared to the iPad Air or any iPad in general. But to take a screenshot, all you have to do is just hold down the power button and the upper volume. And this is going to take a screenshot. All you have to do is just click these two buttons right here just like this and boom, we're gonna have our screenshot right there. And as you can see, it's down here and we just click on that and say you by accidentally did it, you can easily delete that by just clicking the trash button right there. But now we have access to edit or send our screenshot wherever we want. If we click right here, you can send it via email message, 
share it to an album, save it to a file, whatever you want to do, you can do that. You can also scan right here using this button right here. You can draw using your Apple Pencil or using your finger to take notes right there. But if you want to delete it, you can either click that trash button or just click done right here. You have the option to save to photo, save the files, or delete the screenshot. I'm just going to delete the screenshot to save storage. But also, using the home button and the upper button, you also that's the way you shut off your iPad as well. So for example, if we hold these two down like this, it's going to give us the option to shut off our iPad. And all you have to do is just slide to have that power off. I don't need to shut it off. But in case you didn't know and you want to save battery on your iPad Air, then that's the way to do it. But those are two options you can use with the power button and the volume buttons on the iPad Air. Take a screenshot, just click the power button and the volume button and then hold it down to shut off the iPad. So I want to go over a quick detail I actually missed about the iPad. So if you have an iPhone or any of the recent iPhones, You'll notice that the ringer for the iPad or the iPhone is actually on this side of the iPhone if it was an iPhone. And basically by flicking that on and off, you have the option to either have your phone on vibrate or on ringer. So if it's on ringer, you'll receive all the notifications with the sound. But if it's on vibrate, it'll just vibrate the phone instead of having the noise come out of it. But for the iPad Air... I don't know if this is the case for previous iPads, but for the iPad Air, there's actually no ringer. So if you want your iPad to vibrate rather than have the noises come out when you receive a notification, all you have to do is just go to the control center right here and you're gonna have this option, which is the ringer. So by holding that down, you're gonna have the ringer turned on or off. I have it turned off, so when I receive a notification on my iPad now, it'll just vibrate rather than make a noise, but I have that turned on. So now I'm gonna receive, when I receive notifications, or if I text, you'll hear noises coming out of the speakers on the iPad, and this will allow you to receive notifications with a noise, but if you don't want that and you don't want any noise, for your ringers or your notifications, all you have to do is just turn that back off and now you're just gonna get a vibrate rather than a noise coming out for those notifications. I forgot to run that by you guys, but yeah, there's no ringer on the side of the iPad like there is on an iPhone, so that's one way to turn off notifications or turn off the ringer on your iPad so you don't receive them, you just receive a vibrate instead. The next feature I wanna talk about is a brand new feature for the iPad Air and it allows you to have easier access to apps and switching between apps. I just found out about this and I think it's super cool so I want to show you guys how this works and let's dive right into it so for example if I pull up an app whatever app it's gonna be doesn't matter if it's files or any app you pull up you're gonna see these three dots at the top and these three dots actually have way more of an effect than you think so if you click this you're gonna see these three options right you're gonna see this this and this so basically right now we're set to this tab where it just shows this app in one no other apps but I want to show you guys what happens if you click this right here, for example, this middle tab. Now, basically, that app's going to go to the side, and it's going to be over here, and now we are in split view. And this allows you to choose a different app while having that Files app open. So we have the Files app open, so now we're going to choose to click on App Store right here, for example. So now we have both apps pulled up, and what this does, this allows you to easily switch between apps but it's up to you which apps you want to pull up. This just allows for a more efficient switching between these apps. So say for example, we just go back to this and then click right here. Now we're back to this view. And then we click the three dots again. You're gonna see we have the option to create a new window as well. So now we're gonna have two files open opposed to one. And this works for any apps, like I said, it doesn't, it's not limited to just files. But as you can see, now we have these two apps open as well. And then I just want to go back to these three dots right here, and we're going to click this side right here. So now we have the apps, the files app move to the right of the iPad opposed to the left side. So this is slide over, and you can also choose another app for this one. So say, for example, we want to go to Maps. Now we're going to have both maps open and the recent files open so this allows you to switch between apps super easily and if you want only one app open no big deal you just go back to this and like i said you have multiple tabs to choose from and you can create a new window for any of these apps completely your call but this is a brand new feature for the ipad air and just allows you to maximize your productivity and allows you to more efficiently switch between apps so definitely if you want to hop between apps more easily instead of having to close them out and then go back to a different app and switch between those you can now have this option on the iPad. So like I said, for any of these options, you have these three dots or any of these apps you go onto, you're going to have these three dots at the top. It stays the same and you can maximize and choose which side you want that app that's open to go to either the left or the right side of the iPad, depending on your preference. And then while those are open, you can also choose a different app to choose when using these apps. 
Also, like I said, you click these three dots, you can also add new windows for each of these individual apps on your iPad Air. So I definitely think that's worth checking out and definitely start using that if you want to switch between apps easier on the brand new iPad Air. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. This was a complete beginner's guide for the brand new iPad Air. If you found this video helpful, make sure to drop a like and hit that subscribe button for more great content like this. I also encourage you guys to go to appfindvip.com and subscribe to our email newsletter to get the best mobile apps and games delivered directly to your email inbox. You'll also be entered in our giveaways where you guys can win incredible prizes. And in addition to this, I also encourage you guys to go follow us at AppFindVIP. This account shows all the best tips, tricks, and hidden features for all new technology out there. So if you're interested, definitely give that a follow. And then lastly, I encourage you guys to go to BestRewardsApps.com to see the best rewards apps out there. These are affiliates of ours, and these apps allow you to earn incredible rewards and great prizes. So definitely go check out this website if you want to start earning great rewards. Thank you guys for watching and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.